What's going on guys, Merrick here, back with another Dragon Ball Super update. Uh, today they revealed the final color for the Colossal Warfare set, the black cards featuring Demigra, Mira, Toa, and some of the other Overrealm cards. And a lot of the cards look to be really good, uh, and a few of them are a little more than just good. Let's go ahead and check them out. The first leader we have is Demigra. Uh, his auto says, when this card attacks a leader card, place three cards from the top of your deck in the drop area. If all the cards placed in the drop area are black, draw one card. So for the first time, we actually have a card that encourages you to build a deck simply around just black cards. Now, you probably still won't want to. There's still some cards that you're probably going to run that are colored regardless, but this encourages you to build a deck strictly of black cards, which adds a little more creativity. When you restand your two energy and awaken, he becomes Ghastly Malice Demigra, and he has an ability called Wormhole, which says you can activate Overrealm and Dark Overrealm up to a total two times a turn. That's actually kind of terrifying. I do not like that at all. That's going to be abusive as shit. As Auto says, when this card attacks, draw one card and activate main. Once per turn, choose up to three black cards in your warp and place them in your drop area which helps you to overrail more than once a turn. That's actually pretty disgusting. It's creative. I like it. However, my biggest issue with this ability is not even the fact of how bad this could be for the meta, but simply just the fact that if you can come up with such creative stuff like this, why don't we have more leaders where the front side actually has a different ability than attack a leader, draw a card? really seems like some of the cards they went over the top for and others they just didn't give a shit. Then for our other black leader we got another Mira card. Uh, his activate main says once per turn choose one card in your life and add it to your hand. This card gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn then place three cards from the top of your deck in the drop area so it allows for a little self awakening and it allows you to feel your overrealm. Do I think it's better than the other Mira, the one that gives crit? Uh, possibly. Um, the self-awakening does seem to be the biggest uh, thing that everybody tries to go for in the meta, uh, which is evident by, based on the like the three drop cards that go, hey, take two of your own life, uh, KO a battle card if you did so. Like Obviously you're going to do so because it gives you two cards and allows you to self-awaken. Then on his Awakened side, Mira, one with darkness, looks like some weird Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan for hybrid, I don't even know what that is. Uh, when this card attacks, draw one card, and his activate main, once per turn, choose three cards in your warp and place them in your drop area. This card gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. Honestly, unless you really want to run him just because he's an android, I don't think he's worth running. Uh, I kind of feel like the other Mira is better, so is Demigra, so is Mass Saiyan, so is uh, Xeno Trunks. Then we have my favorite card revealed in the black set, which is Burst Energy Super Saiyan Bardock. He's a 4 cost, 20,000 power, Overrealm 4 with 1 energy cost. Uh, his auto says when you play this card using Overrealm, it gains 10,000 power for the duration of the turn and can act, attack battle cards in active mode. So you're going to get a free 20k with him, 30k with him actually. Uh, you can KO over a battle card and then you can use him. That now gives us at least 12 targets to evolve into. The Super Saiyan 3 Bardock Super Rare from Set 3, uh, where you evolve him on a Xeno Bardock for 5 energy, and he comes in the area in active mode, which is nice, so you can attack with that one, you can attack with the Double Strike one that we have already, or you can attack with the new Promo one as well, but it allows this card to see so much play, which is scary and terrifying, and honestly, it's kind of good for, uh, kind of good for some of the decks right now, uh, especially against Veggies. Then we have Dimension Support Trunks, he's a 3 cost, 15,000 power with Overrealm 3 for 1 energy. When you play this card using Overrealm, choose up to 1 skillless battle card with an energy cost of 2 or less from your deck and play it, then shuffle your deck. Then it gains critical for the duration of the turn. So this Trunks allows you to bring out one of the vanilla cards that we're all going, why the hell are you making these? And it comes out free for crit, so most of those vanilla cards, if I remember correctly, have 10,000 power, so it's a 10,000 crit. but. Eh, that's kind of underwhelming if you ask me. However, since this card is 102 and the previous Bardock is number 100 in the set, then we know that this Super Saiyan 3 Trunks that we revealed uh, after the trailer was released is going to be the Super Rare for the set, at least for that slot. Uh, still no clue what it'll end up doing, uh, but that definitely has to be the Super Rare, and you can tell from uh, the energy little energy wisps flying off of from his hand. Uh, it definitely has that super rare foiling to it. 
Then we have Time's Choice, Supreme Kai of Time. She's a 3 cost, 15,000 power. And when you play this card using Overrealm, look it up to the top 3 cards of your deck. Choose up to one battle card from among them and add it to your hand. Then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. So she's kind of like a Time Patrol Trunks, except only for battle cards. That's not too bad. Uh, I just feel like Overrealm, you're probably going to get something better out of an Overrealm ability than, I don't know, than just adding a card to your hand. Then we have everybody's new favorite card to talk about, Time Control Krona. She's the one cost 3,000 attack with Deflect that when you play her, you draw a card and then your opponent can't play battle cards from their hand with the skills of super combos for the duration of the game. <sighs> Still not the best answer to Shugesh, but it is what it is and uh, there's no point in discussing it any further. What's done is done, right? Then we have Dark Control Demon God Demigra. He's a 4 cost 20,000 with Dark Overrealm 4 for 3 energy. Now this says that Overrealm and Dark Overrealm can only be activated once per turn. So do does that mean that you can only activate one or the other? Or does that mean you can activate one Overrealm and one Dark Overrealm each? Either way, uh, when this card attacks, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and sends it to their warp. If that card was a battle card, combo with it in your combo area. That's kind of gross. Um, I don't I don't really know how I feel about that. I guess it would cause you to get rid of your extra cards. So, like, you're going to pitch your negates or you're going to pitch your, your sensu beans or, you know, maybe some of your, your less useful battle cards, but... I don't really like that it rips a card from your hand and then it gains the combo power from it. I think losing a card is already a good enough part of the ability to justify playing it for that ability uh, instead of, oh, I also get to combo with the card that I took away from you. And since it goes to the warp and doesn't go to the drop area, there's very little interaction that the deck is going to be able to have with that card unless the player is also running a black deck. Then which cards like... Killer Sword Trunks and uh, Trunks Power Overseeing Time can get them back, or the cards that say, hey, take your warp and put it back in your drop area. That's really the only way you're ever going to see those cards again. Based on the numbering system, we know that Temporal Darkness Demigra is going to be the super rare for the Demigra chain. Uh, there's no telling if it's going to be an actual Evolve card or if it's going to be an EX Evolve, kind of like the Super Saiyan 3 Bardock that we talked about earlier. It would make sense for it to be an EX Evolve, just to kind of go along with the, the rest of the theme for the Overrealm block, but until we actually see what the card does next Friday, it's anyone's guess. Then we have another one of those troubling black cards, kind of like Cronoa. It's Heavenly Wizard Demigra. He's a 2 cost 10,000 power. His power is irrelevant because you have no need to play him since his auto says during your turn when you combo with this card, if your opponent has three or less energy, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier with 30,000 or more power and KO it. So no matter what, you're going to pretty much pretty much be KOing any of their cards during the rest of the game. Since most games only go to three or four turns anyways, and 30,000 power, you're ignoring barrier. That's just, that's ridiculous. You know what this makes me think, too, is, oh, it's a King Vegeta killer. Why does it seem like they are so hard to go against the Great Apes, but the Veggie Package, they aren't touching at all? Like, there are other things besides Great Apes that are problematic, and right now, Great Apes aren't doing as much as the Veggies. Not even half of it. Then we have Invasive Power Mira. He's a 5 cost 25,000 with Overrealm 5 for 1 energy. And he just gains Double Strike. Really, uh, really underwhelming, especially for um, one of the cards that you actually have to have a cost for. But it seems like they are wanting you to have a cost for most of the Overrealm cards now. But I just feel like there's better. There's better Mira cards to play. There's the crit one, there's the, the one that makes you discard when you play it. Like this is just the the least of the least threatening Mira card that we actually have. And again, based on the numbering system, we know that Mira Creator Absorbed is going to be the final super rare for the black setup. I really don't know what's going on with this card. I know he's got like the Super Saiyan hair like some of the evolved mirrors have. Uh, why he looks like he's got white fur, like he's a Super Saiyan 4, I'll, I'll never understand. I don't know enough about Xenoverse or Heroes or any of that stuff, but this is going to be the Super Rare, probably be an EX Evolve, uh, just like the other cards we mentioned before. Then we have Dark Absorption Mira, he's a 3 cost 15,000 power uh, with over round 3. 
And then he has Union Absorbed for 4 energy. Place one Toa from your warp under this card. That's a new way to Union, uh, which really seems easy to do. And if your leader card is an Android or Toa, choose one Mirror with an energy cost of 7 in your hand or warp and play it on top of this card in active mode. The fact that you can play it from warp is really gross. I get it that it goes along with the Overrealm theme. But that's just so easy to make sure you're going to have it no matter what. And it's kind of odd that he, ha he has to be an Android or Toa leader. Uh, meaning you can't use it with Demigra, but I guess it kind of goes with the theme. Uh, I'm not sure why we got another Mirror Leader, though, instead of a Toa Leader. It kind of seems like we got a good bit of Toa support in this set, uh, just like we did last set. So, to me, it would make a little more sense to have it be a Toa Leader. But again, I don't know enough about Xenoverse to know why one is more important than the other. Then we have Umbral Invitation Toa. She looks a little different than the other Toas we've seen. Uh, she's a 4 cost 15,000 with Dark Overrealm 4 for 1 energy. And when you play this card, choose up to one of the battle cards in your opponent's battle area with an energy cost of 3 or less and gain control of it. So it kind of goes along with the theme of the other two Toas. Uh, we've got the one that allows you to take a 2 drop or less, and then we've got the EX Evolve, I think it was, that allows you to take a 4 drop or less. And then now this one allows you to take 3, so it's all about taking your opponent's cards. And then we have Dark Rejuvenator Toa, who's a 3 cost 10,000 power. Uh, with Overrealm 3 for 1 energy, and when you play this card with Overrealm, choose up to one of your battle cards with an energy cost of 2 or less and switch it to active mode. So that's kind of cool, you can switch a 2 or less back to active to attack again, um, but really, I don't know, for 3 Overrealm and 1 energy, I feel like there's just better cards that you could use than Overrealming for this. Then we have by far the stupidest name I've ever seen in Dragon Ball, Gravy, Lightning's Might. He's a 3 cost 20,000 power with Dark Over Realm 2 for 2 energy, and that's literally all he does. Why the fuck he exists, I don't know. Where he came from, I don't know. Why is he named Gravy? I don't know. But he's here, and uh, yeah, I don't know why he'll play this card. Then we have Gravy in Demigral's Thrall. He's a 2 cost 15,000 power. And it says when you attack or combo with this card, if your leader card is black, choose up to two cards from your warp and place them in your drop area. Um, I can see him being played just because you aren't really going to be using a lot of your energy for some of the cards just because some of the overrealm cards don't cost any energy and so you can play him on a turn you have two free energy and you can attack with him or you can just combo with him for free from your hand and get your cards back. Then we have Frigid Blast Poutine. Uh, she's a 2 cost 10,000 power with Dark Over Realm 3. When you play this card, choose up to 1 Demigra with an energy cost of 4 or less from your deck and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. A lot of these cards are Dark Over Realm 3 or Regular Over Realm 3, uh, which works well with the new leaders because they do uh, mill 3 cards from the top of their deck. And then we have Poutine in Demigra's Thrall. She's a 1 cost 4,000 power with Blocker. And when you play this card, if your leader is Demigra, place up to 2 cards from the top of your deck in the drop area. I don't think there's any reason to play her. I think uh, for 1 cost for Blocker, she's just kind of eh. I mean, granted, I understand she can soak up a hit, so it's kind of like having a negate. But at the same time, it's just it, there's better things you could do with 1 energy. And at the rate a lot of these cards are going, you're going to deck yourself out. Then we've got Time Trauma Mass Saiyan, he's our Awakener for black, he's a 3 cost 15,000 power. When you play this card, if your leader card is black, you may choose up to 2 cards in your life and add them to your hand. If you chose to add one or more cards to your hand, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost 5 or less and send it to the warp. Again, I feel like they're just trying to speed this game up for no reason by adding these ridiculous 2-card two, uh, two self-awakening cards. Uh, so It's just going to make some of the cards that are in previous sets completely unplayable. Then we have Dimensional Banisher Fu. He's a 5 cost, 20,000 power with Overrealm 5 for 1 energy. Uh, he's got Double Strike, and when you play this card with Overrealm, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to their warp. Kind of un underwhelming, to be honest, and I think that the Scientist Fu from the promo pack is a lot better. It's got Double Strike, it's got the same power, and you get to draw two cards instead of warping one of your opponent's battle cards that may not even present a threat to you at the time you play uh, either of these cards. Then, for those of you who thought that Time Control Kronoa was a bad card, you're really going to hate Toki Toki Time Creator, who's a 1 cost 1000 power with Deflect, and when you play this card, you may place it on top of your deck. If you do so, choose up to one black card with a 3000 power from your deck and play it, then shuffle your deck. 
the really stupid thing about this card is that there is only one black card with 3,000 power, and that's Time Control Cronoa. So you're going to play this, put it on top of your deck, search your deck for Cronoa. Cronoa is going to come into play. Cronoa's gonna effect is going to activate. Now you can't play cards with Shugesh. Now you draw a card. Now you've got Toki Toki back in your hand, which, in a way, you plus one. You don't gain anything from it because you drew the Toki Toki you just played, but it's a five cost. Or, I mean, it's a 5,000 combo that you can play for free, uh, so you're really not getting any disadvantage from it, and uh, that essentially gives you eight time control Cronoas. Then we've got our first extra card, it's Seasoning Arrow. It's a one cost to activate battle. If your leader card is Demigra, it gains 10,000 power for the duration of the battle. And if it's your turn, your opponent then chooses one card from their hand and sends it to their warp. And if that card is a battle card, combo with it in your combo area. So again, it's kind of forcing your opponent to choose, hey, either get rid of a low-cost uh, garbage battle card that you can afford to lose and they're going to gain an extra 5,000. Or, if they play it early enough, play a super combo that they can't get jack shit from, which uses waste your one of your super combos, but then they're not getting anything either. Or go ahead and, again, throw away an extra card, which is, either way, that's probably your best bet and the most sen sensible thing to do uh, when your opponent plays this against you. Then we also have an activate battle for Mira. It's Dark Kamehameha. And if your leader card is Mira, it gains 15,000 power for the duration of the battle. And if it's your turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of 4 or less and send it to their warp. Honestly, this is a lot less... Uh, a lot less of a pain in the ass than Demigra's version, even though it does give them an extra 5,000. Uh, chances are Demigra is going to gain an extra 5,000 from that anyways, and rip a card out of your hand, And where this is just warping a card from your battle area. Then we have our zero cost card for black, minus Killy Zone. It's an activate main that says send three cards from the drop area to your warp, and draw one card, then your opponent may not activate counterplay skills for the duration of the turn. So you get to add extra cards to your warp, which I guess works since some of the cards want you to send cards from the warp back to the drop. And you get to draw a card, so you essentially replace it. You're kind of deck thin thinning a little bit. Um, and then your opponent can't play counterplay skills for the rest of the turn. The only reason I could see even playing this is side decking it at best. And right now just playing it against yellow because Crusher Ball, Cold Bloodlust, and the new extra card for Harutagarn are the only cards that really have counterplay. So, again, this is really a side deck card at best. However, it is a free play card with zero energy, and you do draw a card to replace itself. But unless you're playing against a yellow deck, there's no point in playing this card. Here we've got the promo card from the special box. It's Dimension Control Demigra. He's a 4 cost 20,000 with Overrealm 4 for 1 energy. Uh, when this card attacks during the turn you played it with Overrealm, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and sends it to their warp. And if it was a battle card, you get to combo with it. That That's just the basic theme, is just stealing all your opponent's cards and comboing with them. It's pretty gross. Um, I don't like that there's no way to stop your opponent from doing that outside of counter cards. And I think for a future mechanic, it would be really nice if they added an ability that prevented your opponent from sending your cards uh, to the warp, or sending cards from anywhere to the warp in general, kind of like how Time Cronoa just says, hey, you can't play cards from your hand with super combos for the rest of the game. The last thing we're going to touch on are going to be the giant leader cards that are supposed to come in every box, and they finally revealed what they are going to be, and there's seven of them total. Uh, two of them are not even not even cards in this set. Uh, we've got the Baby Leader, the Hurudagarn Leader, Lord Slug, the Bardock. I was so hoping Bardock was going to be one of them. Demigra, and then the Piccolo Jr. from the starter deck, and the Super Saiyan 4 Goku from the starter deck, which... Honestly, I like both of those too. I'm actually going to try and get all three of those. The Bardock, the Goku, and the Piccolo. And I'm sure, I know one of my teammates is going to want the Baby. One of them is going to want Harutagarn at the very least. Maybe Demigra. Uh, they both might want. They're both probably going to be interested in playing the new Black stuff. So, plus, we're, we've got a case coming. So that's 12 cards. We'll probably get multiples of uh, at least half of these. Uh, hopefully they are evenly distributed. But if not, well, we'll make do. And the fact that these are tournament legal means that if I am playing one of these leaders, I probably will be playing the giant card, uh, just because you can. Uh, hopefully they'll be foil, 
Uh, that would be nice if they did keep the, the foil backing. Uh, if not, then I may not use them. I may just keep them just because I like the leaders. Uh, but still, pretty cool little thing for them to add to us, uh, to add to the set. Uh, makes it a little more worthwhile buying boxes, I suppose. This is kind of a nice thing for Bandai to do. All right, well, that's going to do it for all of today's reveals. Uh, somehow all these videos always end up going 20-plus minutes, and I don't understand why. Uh, I guess maybe because I just ramble on for too long, kind of like I am now. But I feel like going over all the cards individually and what their abilities could do is important for understanding how to play the cards as well as how to play against them. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below for us. You know, we appreciate all the support you've been giving us, and we appreciate all of our subscribers as well. Uh, last count, I saw we were at like 736. We're just about at 250 or so uh, until we get our partnership back, and that just means so much to me that you guys have supported us uh, as far as you guys have. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of all these new black cards, and uh, if you d agree or disagree with any of the uh, observations that we've made. It's always nice to get an outsider's perspective, get somebody else's uh, view of the cards, and uh, maybe I missed something. Maybe something that I missed is a little more broken uh, than I had originally interpreted, or maybe something that I thought was broken isn't as big a deal as uh, you guys think it is. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the frig out of here, and we'll see you guys in the next video.